Hello, and welcome to the Polk Pioneer Oral History Program, a collaboration between the Polk County Historical Association and the Polk County History Center. I am Lou Ann Mims, the Research and Genealogy Historian in the History and Genealogy Library over at the History Center. Thank you for joining us today, as I have the pleasure to speak with Ms. Lillian Euler, a lifelong resident of Polk County, and she recently celebrated a significant birthday turning 101 years old in August. She will be sharing her personal memories about her life in Winter Haven and in Polk County. Thank you so much for joining me today, Ms. Euler. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Can you tell me when and where you were born? Where I was born? I was born in Culpeper, Virginia in uh, August the 4th, 1915. How did your family come by being in Polk County? I think my father had a friend, a Danish friend, who had settled in uh, Lakeland. So we first came down to Lakeland, which is about 15 miles from here. What is your father's name and what was his occupation? My father's name was George Victor Euler, and he was a chemist. Where did he work? Uh, the only place he, that I know that he worked as a chemist was at a brewery in Denmark. So what kind of work did he do in Polk County? Well, because the Depression came, uh, he and my mother opened a shop, a ladies' ready-to-wear shop. What year did they open the shop? It was some, one year in 1930, and I don't, know, um, I don't know which year it was. About what year did you move into Polk County? We moved to, Polk, uh, we moved to Winter Haven in 1919. But you lived in Lakeland before that. That's right. And your mother, where was she from? She was from Copenhagen, Denmark. And what is her name? Her name was Emma Syerson. And so how did she come to the United States? Well, it was a sort of a coincidence, I think you'd say. Uh, she was in her early 20s, and she, together with someone else, opened a uh, fur shop in Copenhagen, the only woman to open a fur shop. And um, as it happened, uh, my father's mother needed a new fur coat. And uh, they had heard about my mother's, uh, about uh, Emma Saracen uh, shop, and that it, uh, they did go good uh, work. So that's where they went to purchase the new coat. And my mother, I mean, my father was attracted to my mother, and that was it. So what year did they get married? They got married in 1913 in New York City. My mother made the trip from Copenhagen to uh, New York uh, by herself. And they, the ships in those days were about uh, two weeks across the ocean. Did you have any brothers or sisters? Yes, I had one sister. What's her name? Pardon me? What is her name? She, her name was Eleanor Elizabeth. Is she older or younger? She was younger. So where did you live as a child in Winter Haven? We lived at uh, 101 Pine Street, Northeast. And I can tell you my phone number. It was 801 Green. So what was your neighborhood like? There were, there were enough children in the neighborhood that uh, after breakfast, we went out and you could find someone to play hopscotch 
or jacks or uh, uh, bounce the ball or skate. Or, there was always someone around to play with. And uh, this house was uh, cat corner from the schoolhouse, which was uh, a big, big brick building that housed uh, from kindergarten to through high school. And then we could, there we could watch the, uh, I mean, excuse me, from there we could pl uh, play on the swings and the uh, seesaw. So there was plenty to do. Can you describe the house? Is it still standing? No, the house was full of termites and the, and the fire department destroyed it. So it was a wood house? Uh, yes. So it was built in, uh, I guess, about 1925. And it was a, a two-bedroom, bung bungalow type. Where did you move after that? Uh, let's see. Well, the, the Depression came and that, uh, <laughs> that ruined everything. So um, we lived in, in different rental houses. One in particular I remember was up on Avenue I Northwest. And uh, on Saturday nights up there, there were maybe eight of us would gather under the uh, traffic light and someone would read a mystery story. And also uh, uh, the lady, the people that lived across the street listened to uh, Amos and Andy. Now we were not allowed to go in her house or her home, but we could sit on the steps outside and listen to Amos and Andy. You said the Depression messed everything up. How did it impact your family? Um, it, it um, well, it was a very financial uh, disaster, as far as I can tell. My family didn't say too much about it, but they had been dabbling in uh, real estate, buying a house, uh, doing minor repairs, repainting the house, and selling. And uh, when the Depression came, no one could buy a house. There was no money anywhere. So that caused them to open the store. They were stuck with three houses that they couldn't dispose of. But you didn't live in any of those houses? No, not those. Well, tell me a little bit about the store opening. What do you remember? Well, the uh, first location was on a side street, but I know my mother had an ambition to be on Central Avenue, which was the main street of downtown Winter Haven. And uh, she was lucky enough after two, yeah, two or three moves, she was lucky enough to get uh, a store next to Macquarie on Central Avenue. So that was a key piece of real estate to be in that retail section? What was that? Uh, the, the drive to be next to McCrory's, it was so that she would get more business? Yes. Was that, did it work? I think so. We did pretty well. What was the name of the shop? Euler's Ready to Wear. Euler's ready to wear, and what kind of clothing did they sell? It, it was um, more or less a general store with, a, with dresses and, uh, and lingerie. And at one time, she carried hats, but uh, maybe for a year. But it was uh, more or less a general type. So during the Depression, they opened a store. Was, do yes. You, do you, did you ever find out what the driving force was in that? That seems kind of risky. 
I know, but my mother was very ambitious. She, she uh, would take a chance, and it always worked out. How long did you operate the store? Um, when she passed away uh, in 1944, and uh, then my sister and I took over the store. And we stayed in that location until 1963, the year that uh, Kennedy was murdered. And uh, then uh, I knew that there was a, a large apartment in the front of a motel uh, halfway between uh, downtown and Cypress Gardens. And I thought it would be a good location. So I, I persuaded my sister that we should move the shop, do away with half of the merchandise, and, and uh, cater more to sportswear, which was very popular now. So that's what we did, and we stayed there for 20 years. So Eleanor and I operated the shop for 40 years. Successfully operated it. Even during the Depression, it was successful, and then through all of the recessions, it, it still was able to provide you an income. Yes. Well, let's back up for just a minute. Um, did you by chance attend the elementary school that you mentioned earlier, or was it a different one? I went to a private uh, kindergarten, and then I went into uh, second grade at the school. What private, at the kin public. what private kindergarten did you go to? It was Miss Gibson. And then what elementary did you go to? The, uh, the public school uh, in Winter Haven. Was that the name of it? Yes, I think so. And I was in the, I went into the second grade. What kind of um, activities did you do at the school? Nothing special that I, that I could think of. Did you have any extracurricular activities? No. No? There wasn't, uh, in those days, now see, that would be 1920s. Uh, we didn't do all those things that they do nowadays. Did you have an interest in any particular hobby? Uh, not not uh, at that age. Did you attend church? Uh, Sunday school. At what church? Um, it was called St. Matthew Episcopal. Is that church still standing? Uh, no, that, uh, that church was moved. Well, the, the congregation bought property and built a new church, and the name was changed to St. Paul. And it is still St. Paul. What high school did you go to? The Winter Haven High School. Was there anything you did extra in high school? No, I, I just went along with the flow. What were your subjects like? Pardon me? What kind of subjects did you have? Well, I took uh, French, but that was a disaster. The uh, teacher had been in World War I, and uh, we read books and we did field trips, and then I tried to use my credit to get into college, and uh, that was a disaster. But uh, what college uh, did you try to get into? Southern Lakeland in Lakeland, Florida Southern College. That's right. Mm -hmm. Did you go? Yeah, two years. Two years. Uh, in those days, you could get a uh, a degree to teach lower grades, and that's what I got. 
So you went on to teach school? No, I didn't. I had uh, um, uh, Mr. Mitchell came in and uh, uh, personally asked me if I would like to uh, teach. I think it was in Wachula, but I don't remember exactly. But uh, uh, I had started working in the shop, and uh, I liked it. So uh, I thanked him, declined, and uh, then I worked in the shop. What year would have that been when you were at Florida Southern? Well, let's see. I graduated in 1933 from high school. So that would be 34, 34. and 35. Florida Southern's changed a bit since then. I haven't been over there, but uh, I understand it has. And you were there right before Frank Lloyd Wright came. Yes. So, um, Tell me a little bit about Winter Haven and some of the activities. You mentioned that you moved your shop over closer to Cypress Gardens. Do, yes. you, do you remember when that opened? No, I don't, but I remember that when uh, I was in, uh, uh, let's see, they call it middle school now. Uh, uh, let's see, it was in junior, junior high school. That was seventh and eighth grade. We would take field trips, and to get out to what is what was Cypress Gardens uh, was uh, sand ruts, so it wasn't even paved that far out. Dick Pope did a lot of work on that. Did you go back as an adult at all and see the changes? Uh, from time to time. It was a beautiful place. Yes, it was. And they had, uh, they went to the Near East uh, many, on many trips and brought back uh, plants that would grow in Florida, but were not native to Florida. Can you remember anything about Bach Tower Gardens opening or being around? Uh, not the opening, but uh, my sister and I uh, often, if uh, Easter was uh, in April or the end of March, we would go to um, the early uh, church service at Bach Tower. And that was lovely. Was this back in the time where you sat on the orange crates? <laughs> I, I guess so. I don't remember the orange crates there. I do remember uh, going to the city park in Winter Haven and sitting on orange crates. Did your family have any connection to citrus? It, any what? any connection? Did you own any citrus property? Oh, yes, my father, when he bought the house in Winter Haven and we moved to Winter Haven, he also bought two small groves. And uh, one of them was a, um, a grapefruit grove. And I, I remember later on he told me that uh, the uh, uh, revenue from that Grapefruit Grove paid for the Grove. It was a very good return. But uh, things fluctuate. Um, a little bird told me that as a child you were able to travel out of the country. Where did you go? Uh, Denmark. Denmark. What, <laughs> uh, what prompted but, that trip? <laughs> A family. Uh, my father's uh, mother was dying of cancer, and uh, this was when I was an infant, and uh, we lived in Virginia, and we went to uh, uh, Denmark. We were there uh, about a year, I guess, but the, there were rumblings of World War One 
And uh, my father decided, that, uh, my parents decided it was better to come home before the war started. So we did that. Then in 1923, uh, my mother thought it would be a good idea if uh, Eleanor and I met our relatives because they were all in Denmark at that time. And uh, my father wouldn't go because it would have made his 13th trip across the Atlantic. So uh, he stayed in Winter Haven and we went and they, they rented a uh, cottage near, uh, near a beach in Copenhagen. And uh, I don't mean Copenhagen, I mean in Denmark. And um, so uh, uh, it was quite a trolley ride to, uh, to get into the city. But uh, did, did you uh, take there, a ship over? It, 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 no airplanes at that time. So, uh, yes, we went by ship. And uh, uh, let's see, we stayed over there about three or four months. I don't remember exactly which one. But uh, we uh, did some sightseeing. We went to outdoor theater and various things that tourists usually do. And also, it was near a beach, so we learned, Ellen and I learned how to swim over there. But I, let me tell you a story. Uh, one warm day in, in the summer in, in uh, Denmark, uh, we had taken the trolley into uh, uh, Copenhagen, and the mom's sister and brother-in-law had, had bought her shop, fur shop and were operating it there. So, uh, of course, we went and visited with her. And uh, we were each given a fur scarf. Eleanor was given a, a squirrel uh, collar and a muff. And I was given a fox collar. And here, two little Florida girls in summer clothes, we spoke half Danish, half English. <laughs> we were riding on the trolley on a hot day with fur scarves. <laughs> I'm sure the passengers loved it. That's awesome, though. So your mom's shop was uh, bought by relatives? By her sister and brother-in-law. How long did that remain open? I have no idea. And another thing, you know, the connection between Bach Towers, Carillon, and in Denmark they had a lot of Carillons. Did you ever put the two, in, two not, together? Not, uh, not that I remember. Hmm. You we mentioned did go to see the Little Mermaid. The statue? Yes. And, and uh, there's a church, that, uh, an English church in that park and I signed my name in there. I don't know that it's still there. You talked briefly about the onset of World War I and coming back to the United States. You were an adult during World War II. Yes. What, what memories do you have of being at the home front during World War II? Well, uh, there were, I remember, a lot of government uh, restrictions on various things, merchandise and various things. And then I remember uh, uh, Winter Haven had uh, a place for officers to go to relax, and they also had a place for uh, uh, servicemen. Uh, it was an old home that had been taken over by what, I, I guess it was USO, I don't remember. Do you remember where in Winter Haven that was? Yes, it's where, uh, let's see, what is there now? Oh, it's where our library is now. There was a beautiful old home 
that had a, a carriage garage on the back street. And uh, they took that over. Did, was there any economic impact during the war? You were owning your business and you're a female. How did that impact you, the war? Well, it was, uh, it was harder to get merchandise, uh, uh, different kinds of merchandise. And uh, uh, you were allowed al allotments. And uh, uh, then, of course, the servicemen, the minute they got money, they, they spent it. Was there any so, um, business cooperative in downtown Winter Haven? I don't think so. No? I don't remember. You talked about that the, where the USO uh, was is now the library. What other buildings used to be in downtown that have gone by the wayside? Can you recall anything significant? Uh, I, I wouldn't say that the buildings have been uh, uh, d destroyed, but uh, uh, downtown Winter Haven, they're really updating those old buildings. Uh, Macquarie's and where we used to be, and and uh, that, that's on Central Avenue, and around the corner on Fifth Street, they're they're doing a lot to the uh, old buildings and and uh, making apartments above above the store buildings. So uh, the, and uh, I think they're renting the. The apartments, I think, uh, I think they're pretty well filled. Winter Haven's had some significant landmarks to be removed, like the big orange dome. <laughs> yeah, well, it was getting shabby looking. They would have to do something with it. You would have remembered when that was built. <laughs> yes, uh, we all went down to to watch them uh, spray paint it. Yeah. And uh, uh, talk about a building being destroyed, the uh, uh, city hall, fire department, everything. That building was a beautiful building. And uh, of course, the new people coming in, they uh, uh, tore the building down. And what do we get? Papa Jay. <laughs> so. That's progress. Did you uh, ever participate in the Citrus Showcase, the big festival that they would have? Uh, no. No? There was always a parade oh, it, uh, downtown? Uh, yes. Let's see. I, I, don't think, I don't think we really participated. The first Publix opened in Winter Haven. Do you remember anything about that uh, store? Yes, I knew George Jenkins. And uh, uh, he came as uh, a representative to a chain called Piggly Wiggly. And then he opened his, his own store. Did you go and, to it? Uh, yes, indeed. What was different about it? Well, I really don't know that it was any different than in any other grocery store. They kept up with with new merchandise, uh, new uh, uh, new things, and they would add uh, a, a, what, a bakery, or they would add another division that wasn't usually in a grocery store. And, uh, and the, the uh, people that work there are always friendly, always nice to you, and helpful, very helpful. So you've, you've shared a lot of memories with us, but I gotta ask you, um, what's your secret 
to being 101 years old. <laughs> <laughs> Don't rub it in. <laughs> uh, I have no secret. You have no secret? I, no. I take very little in the way of medicine, and uh, I try to eat healthful. But aside from that, I, I have no secret at all. Now, you, you do like a little bit of chocolate now and then. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Do you, do you remember having chocolates as a child? Denmark's quite uh, uh, well known for that. Not, the, not that I really remember. So for your birthday this year, you had a chocolate treat? Public makes a, a wonderful chocolate cake with beautiful icing. Very, very attractive. And of course you have to eat it. <laughs> Is there anything that I haven't asked you that maybe you might want to talk about? I'd like to, uh, I have a couple of stories. Okay. Uh, one is uh, uh, when we were children and still believed in Santa Claus, why uh, the Christmas tree was not put up until Christmas Eve. But uh, uh, on Christmas Eve, they would, they would uh, uh, take a, a sheet and put a, uh, an archway so we couldn't see. They were decorating the Christmas tree and uh, putting presents underneath the tree. And then another thing is that uh, on a chilly night, my father would uh, uh, light the fire in the fireplace because fireplaces were the way houses were or heated back then. We didn't have all these air conditioners and such and floor furnaces. So uh, uh, we would uh, sit with our parents in front of the fire and um, of course you'd say, Mama, how do you spell bicycle? How do you spell tricycle? How do you spell this? So they knew exactly what we wanted. <laughs> but uh, we would write our, our note to Santa Claus, and then we would put the note into the fire, and it would go up to Santa Claus. And I've told that story many times that no one has ever heard of anyone doing that. But it, it was a nice uh, memory. Uh, so, so during this time, there's no TVs. That's uh, right. That's right. No radio. No radio. No. So. Uh, Did anybody uh, in your family play a musical instrument or sing? I, I took lessons on the piano. My father had a, a good singing voice, but uh, I can't carry a tune. Let's reflect a moment about your life in Polk County. If somebody was coming and asking you, you know, what's so special about living in Polk County, what, what would you say to them? Well, I don't know, but we, we have many. And the servicemen that came to Bartow Air Base uh, during World War II, many of them came came back and, and uh, lived in Winter Haven. They maybe went to school to get a degree and uh, got a, uh, uh, a way of living and uh, settled down in Winter Haven. There was something about the, the friendliness of, of the people already here. Are, are they like the... Uh, layout of the lakes. There were so many activities that could be done on a lake. But there, there is an attraction to this section of, of uh, Florida. Did you ever go swimming or uh, participate in water activities? Uh, I, used to, I used to go swimming. And um, when we lived up on Avenue I, uh, we weren't too far from Lake Silver, and uh, what is now a park on Lake on Lake Silver, uh, 
uh, was uh, overgrown with weeds. And some neighbor boys, Ed, Eleanor and I, cleared a path and made it our own private little s swimming area. So, uh, and that was just a half a block from home. Did you ever go to Kissingen Springs? Oh yes, that was that was a favorite. Why take was a, it? A, take a pic, picnic lunch. Yeah. Did you do that when you were a teenager? Or did you do it with your family? Uh, with a uh, teenager. It had a dance floor, right? Did they? I, I didn't. That's know. what I've heard about. <laughs> I never heard that. Hmm. I never do that. We would only go in the daytime. Was the water cold? Oh, yes, indeed. Very. But you would swim in it? Oh, sure. That's, that was the reason to go there. But the phosphate mines took that away from us. Well, I would like to thank you so much for joining me today and sharing all of these wonderful memories and congratulations yeah. on your birthday. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Can I tell you one more story? You can, go ahead. Uh, my mother knew uh, very little English when she came to the United States, just what was taught in the public school. And uh, so she was always learning new words and being in the shop, and at, at the time that we were carried hats, uh, this uh, this lady, she was a, a regular customer. She came in and she wanted a hat. So mom was showing her, and one hat had a narrow brim, and the other hat had a little bit wider brim. So uh, uh, the, they were, discussing which looked better on her. And mom finally came out and said, well, you know, I think that the one with the wider brim looks better on you because you have a horse face. <laughs> well, when mom told us that at supper time, we, we all said, you didn't. And the lady just loved it. So every time she came in, she would say, I'm the lady with the horse face. <laughs> But, but she knew that Mom was trying so hard to think of a description. So was there a, other language uh, issues? I mean, I didn't think about that, her being in the public eye. Well, she was very careful of what she said. And we were not in the habit of using uh, slang or cuss, cuss words. My father didn't approve of that. So uh, uh, there was no chance of her learning those from us. Well, again, wonderful, wonderful <laughs> memories. Any more stories? Uh, no, no, not, re not really. Those two, are, I think, are the best. Well, they, they are. And thank <laughs> you again for sharing your memories and joining us today. And thank you. Uh, thank again, you. congratulations on your birthday. Thank you very much.